Hi, I'm Chris Howard. I'm the Global Chief of Research at Gartner, and welcome to Top of Mind. It's a chance for me to share with you what I and the analysts here at Gartner are thinking about that we think would be important for you. And this is the first in a series where we're going to talk about artificial intelligence. Now, if you're like me, your life has been hijacked by ChatGPT or some version of that for the last couple of months. It is really top of mind. But it didn't come from nowhere. In fact, we have been talking about large language models and generative AI for some time, probably two or three years. But then what happened, of course, in December of 22 is ChatGPT was introduced, and that galvanized the public attention to AI that felt like it was human. And that's what intrigued us at, at first, just as, as people. It's what's called the uncanny valley. It's that place where technology seems to interact with us as if it were a person. And often what happens is that uncanny valley makes people feel really uncomfortable. But what happened in this case is it made us intrigued. And some people like camped out, they like pitched tents in the uncanny valley and they're still there interacting with this really interesting chat functionality. But where it comes from is from this history of generative AI and these large language models, which essentially teach AI how to speak, not what to say, it doesn't have meaning, but it teaches it how humans speak. And it actually sits at the convergence of a few different trends that have been persistent for the last several years. One is just natural language and the fact that people want to interact more and more using conversation with their technology, with technologies like Alexa or Siri or Google and others like that. So that's one. The second is the ability to actually train these models in what's called a transformer model. That's what GPT and other things like that is. It's a giant network that learns how to process tokens, that's what they're called, tokens, and then reassemble those in a way that seems to make sense. So it's a prediction algorithm. Then you have the compute infrastructure, so it takes a lot of compute to run these models, that has also improved to the point where you could run them and build them and train them, very compute intensive. And then the other thing, of course, is any model needs assets as input. These are you know, digital assets. And of course, what GPT was trained on was essentially everything on the public internet and other sources up to the end of 2021. So these things coming together created this environment of chatbots sitting on top of learning models. So now that this convergence has happened, Gartner clients are coming to us and saying, well, should I be afraid of this technology? Should I figure out how to leverage it? Should I shut it down entirely? Do I let people experiment with it? And the truth is that it's kind of all of those things at once. You do have to set guardrails around this technology because as I said earlier, it doesn't know what it means. It knows how to speak, but it doesn't actually understand what it's saying. And that leads to what are called hallucinations or it's factual errors. That means you need to be careful with how it's, how it's used, especially if you're exposing that output directly because it could be wrong. The other thing is that any information that you put into the open chat GPT prompts becomes available to everybody. So if you're putting personal information into that, or if you're putting protected uh, intellectual property into that, suddenly that's open to everybody. It becomes part of the, the mechanism that people are interacting with. But in terms of how you use it, think of scenarios where you have lots and lots of information that you might need to summarize into like a thousand word summary or even shorter, or you're preparing for a board presentation, you need to sort of get a lot of information together all at once. It's really, really great at those kinds of, of use cases. And there will be more that emerge that are more creative and so on. But the very important thing is you have to keep people in the loop to check the output of these tools to make sure that it is actually accurate, uh, that it's not offensive, that it's not simply wrong. And so the human in the loop to keep refining and training the output, really important for every enterprise use case you might pursue. But the questions that our clients are starting to ask are changing. They're moving from simple investigation and potential use cases to what's the future? And one interesting question I get asked a lot is whether or not this is an artificial intelligence inflection point. Well, first of all, with technologies, an inflection point requires human acceptance at scale. That's really what makes a technology become mainstream or head towards mainstream. And that takes time. And so we're at this moment with GPT where the models have been existing for some time. You get this app called ChatGPT and others that are like it that all of a sudden people are paying attention to. And then we're starting to ask the what if and what's next questions. As I was thinking about this, I remember talking to my grandmother who grew up in Yarmouth, Nova Scotia, uh, and she was born in 1900. So this is a time when Yarmouth was actually a really prosperous uh, shipping 
capital. And some of the first automobiles in Canada actually came there. And I remember asking her in the 1980s if she remembered the first vehicle in Yarmouth. And she did. She was with her father. This would have been about 1910, 1911. She was 10, 11 years old. And one of these new cars came by. And she asked her father, what is that? And, and are you interested in that? And he, of course, said, ah, it'll never take off. Now, this is a man that had oxen in his fields to do the farming. And so it would never take off. But then, you, of course, you trace that forward 20, 30 years. What happened? Well, first of all, they started to be mass produced. That was one. Second is they became more affordable so that people could buy them. So you have more of them out there. But really importantly, you had infrastructure that started to develop so you could actually drive these vehicles reliably without them breaking down and blowing tires all the time. And then they became more user friendly. So if you look at early Fords, for example, they have seven or eight pedals that the driver had to use, like super complicated. And what happens is it gets easy, easier to use. It's what the philosophers of technology in the middle of the 20th century called readiness to hand, meaning that the tool simply fits the job it's designed to a point where you don't have to think about it and it simply fits into your hand, readiness to hand. That's what an inflection point really is when it leads to that. I had another example. So the Beatles, when they were in the studios in the late 60s, became very experimental. So if you think of a song like Tomorrow Never Knows, there is filled with loops and sort of weird sounds and stuff. And what happened is that the studio actually became an instrument in that music making in a way that it never had before. But the heritage of that actually is from the 1950s in experimental music. The Beatles start to do that and then becomes a mainstay of like hip hop and, and that kind of music in the 80s where there's a lot of sampling and use of turntables in the studio as an instrument. So again, inflection points from experimental to something that was more popular and then it becomes part of mainstream. I would say in terms of AI and with technologies like GPT, we're kind of like the Beatles in the studio right now where we actually are building on things that have been there before, but it's starting to capture a creative attention that will take us to the next phase. So what I'm talking about here is a reckoning of the relationship between humans and machines. And that's what we'll talk about in the series going forward. This has been Top of Mind, and we'll be back every two weeks with a new topic to explore. Thanks a lot.